part one, we covered events in the Amlicite Rebellion, especially the Battle of River Sidon. In this video, I'll describe some other similar battles in history. I had fun finding these other battles, and I believe that understanding how they are similar to Book of Mormon battles can be yet another testament to the book's authenticity. I'll also take a closer look at some basic battle guidelines and talk about how well the Nephites followed them. But first, the comparisons. Let's look at other one-on-one -on -one duels that took place during other battles, just like Alan Amlesi had. There are quite a few, including a famous fight between Japanese warlords, one fending off the other with nothing but a signaling fan. Another incredible duel, highly criticized elsewhere but accepted legend in Thailand, happened between two Asian princes on top of their elephants. Okay, so next, let's focus on just two aspects of the Battle of River Sidon and see what parallels we find in other battles in history. First, despite the ambush, the defenders are victorious, and second, the loss or strength of leadership is key to the outcome of the battle. Let's start with Rome at the Battle of the Sabus, during Julius Caesar's conquering of the Gauls. The Roman army is halfway into making camp when tens of thousands of Gauls burst out of the trees. The Romans literally have one to two minutes before they are hit, having had no time to form their battle lines, set up defensive works, or artillery pieces. All key factors to the previous Roman success in this area before now. Despite being on the brink of collapse, thanks to Caesar's inspiring leadership, albeit according to him, the Romans hold on and eventually turn the tide, a complete but costly victory. Switching gears to the American Civil War, we have the epic Battle of Shiloh. Confederate General Albert Sidney Johnston gets the slip on the divided Union forces under Ulysses Grant, achieving significant surprise. Through ferocious attacks all day, the rebels are on the verge of crushing this isolated part of the Union force. Rallying the men forward at the front of the battle lines, Johnston gets a bullet wound in the leg and eventually bleeds to death. With him dead, command went to another general at the rear of the battle line, whose lack of accurate information contributes to the attack fizzling out, the Union regrouping and reinforcing, and the Union pushing the Confederates back. An extremely close call for the yet-to-be-famous Ulysses Grant. So there you have it. Three battles where one side, surprised and on the brink of destruction, pulled it together and turned the tide altering the course of history. Now moving on to the Nephites and battle tactics. Let's talk about just two of the many guidelines for military success. First, choose the battlefield. Don't let chance or the enemy dictate where the battle happens or else it will be more difficult to win. Now, did the Nephites follow this guideline? No, they did not. Remember how in both battles of the Amalekite Rebellion, the Nephites started in a disadvantageous position. Not choosing the battlefield made the fights more challenging. The second guideline is encirclement. Entrap the enemy so you can force their surrender. You don't want the enemy to slip away and recover their strength, or else the war will go on and on. So how did the Nephites do with this one? Not so well. In both battles, the enemy army escaped after they broke, returning later to cause more trouble. Okay, let's do a quick exercise and see how the Amlicite Rebellion could have gone differently if the Nephites had followed these guidelines. Imagine, for example, if the Nephites had intercepted Amlicite before he got to Amnihu Hill. Bonus points for entrapping him and his army. The Nephites would have fought on a more even playing field, reducing Nephite casualties and capturing Amlicite and all his followers. After carting all the prisoners home to Zarahemla for trial, the Nephites could have gotten more advanced warning of the approaching Lamanite army. Then the Nephites could have selected a more favorable location for battle, and better yet, sprung an ambush of their own and encircled the Lamanites, forcing them all to surrender. Now, to be fair, the Nephites may have had every intention of following these guidelines. We don't know all the details of why they were unable to, but one thing can be said for sure. The Amlicite Rebellion was more bloody and costly for the Nephites because they didn't follow them. The Nephite military learned some hard lessons from the Amlicite Rebellion. And, just like any good military should do, the Nephites adapted their tactics and improved. Watch the next video to see Captain Moroni put these lessons into decisive action. And comment below with any other comparable battles I missed. There's a lot more that could be said about the dramatic struggle of the Amlicite Rebellion. Thanks for watching!